Hello everyone, good to see you all again. Uh, we're going to be starting week seven on our calendar now. Our days are a bit off because, as you know, many teachers are now being furloughed, so we're not allowed to work on our normal workday schedules. And so what that's going to do is that's going to push our calendar out a little bit longer than it normally would have been. And so the days that we're going to be posting on are not going to line up with our days on the calendar, but I'm still going to be calling it the week number and the day that's on this calendar, okay? So what we're gonna be starting with for Math Monday, even though this is not posted on Monday, it's still considered Math Monday, and what we're gonna be doing, looking at the schedule for week seven, it says review 2D and 3D sh shapes today. So what we're gonna be doing uh, for 2D and 3D shapes, I'll show us. It's actually two pages, so this is page one. And then the second page is a cutout and tape or glue sheet that you're going to be doing separately, okay? So I'm not going to be doing this one with you. Uh, I'm going to be doing this page with you. And I recreated it onto my whiteboard, nice and big. And so what we've got here, we'll start with... Uh, looking at the paper, we're going to review two-dimensional shapes first. Okay, the second page, this one here, is our 3D shapes. And if we remember, two-dimensional, or I, we can call it 2D, two-dimensional shapes are shapes that are flat, that I can't actually hold in my hand, okay? Uh, it's something that I can look at and see in a picture, because it's flat, but I can't pull this shape off the paper and hold it in my hand, okay? So that's kind of the way that we talk about it in kindergarten is that can I hold this or can I only look at it, okay? So this is our two-dimensional shapes uh, grid review. And these five shapes are the big five that we need to know before we go into first grade uh, for kindergarten two-dimensional, okay? And they're not in any particular order, but we definitely start with uh, these top three first, and then we add these two near the end of the year, okay? Uh, so what we're looking at, uh, this is the name of our shape. This is the picture of that shape. We're going to talk about these two columns in depth, and then the last part here, uh, you're going to be drawing the shape that's right here. So we have to look at, we're filling in these two columns, and it's, the number of sides that the shape has and the number of vertices, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna hold off on the circle part first. We're gonna hold off on that one and we're gonna actually jump down to the second shape which says triangle, okay? So let's go ahead and I redrew it onto my little whiteboard that I've got here. Uh, and I redrew four triangles, okay? Very often we see this picture of a triangle in kindergarten and we're often confused when we see a triangle in a different view. This is one version of a triangle, okay? And what makes a triangle so important, its name itself, tri, T-R-I, means three, okay? And that's a very important thing to remember because that's going to help us with the number of sides and the number of vertices. So a side, we'll talk about the sides first. That's what each line is, okay? That's a side. So if I'm looking at these triangles, they're all triangles, they should have three sides because tri, T-R-I, means three, okay? So I should count it. And all of them should end up having three, no matter how big or small, how long or short the side length is. So I see a side here. I'll number that one, two, three. That one's got three sides. I see, let's go to this triangle. One, two, three. That's got three sides. One, two, Three. That one's got three sides. And let's go about this one. Wow, that one's a really small side. Does that still count, though? Yes, it does. So that's one, two, three. 
That's got three sides. All of these are triangles. No matter how they're drawn, they are still triangles. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add that in. Triangles must have three sides. Now let's talk about vertices. What is a vertice? A vertice is where a side come together. Okay, and I and I when we teach this in kindergarten, I like to say this is the pointy part. Okay, if you were to touch it, it would poke your finger. You would feel it. Okay, a side is flat, as if this whiteboard here, this is a flat side, but the pointy part are where it comes together, the corners. Okay, so how many vertices, how many pointy parts are on a triangle? Let's start with this one. Here's one here, here, and here. Well, how many circles did I just do on those? That's three vertices. One, two, three. How about over here? There's one, another, aha. Uh -huh. That's got three. One, two, another three, and again here, one, two, three, three vertices. So for triangle, it's got three sides and three vertices, which matches its name. So let's go ahead and let's take that over to our whiteboard. And like I said, we're gonna skip the circle for a moment. We're gonna fill in the triangle has how many sides it said? Three sides, that's one side here, one side here, one side here. How many vertices, the pointy parts, where the two, where the sides come together? We got one, two, three vertices. And now the last column that you need to fill in is draw it. You have to draw the shape, okay? So remember, it's got three sides. It can go like this, one, two, three. There's our triangle. I'm going to let you figure out square, rectangle, and then the bottom shape, hexagon, on your own. Uh, I'm going to let you finish those, but I'm going to talk to you about this circle one. We held off on circle for a little bit. Okay, The circle is a tricky shape, but it's super important. Okay, Number of sides. How many sides does a circle have? Well, it actually has no sides. There are no sides on a circle. Okay. When we look for a circle, we have to be able to see, like if we look at the triangle, well, that's one side. It's by itself. It's its own line. And here's another line and another line. Well, this is actually a circle. Is actually just one line continuously but that's not a side, okay? So this is actually going to have zero sides. And if there's no sides, there's, that means that there's no pointy parts, no vertices. There's nothing for sides to come together. So this must also be zero. There are no vertices. And the last part is, it says to draw it. Well, there we go. Okay. All right. I'll let you finish the rest of those. When we go over to this worksheet here for our three-dimensional, this is a cut and glue. Okay. So you're going to end up cutting off the bottom part here, and you're going to tape or glue them onto our three-dimensional shapes that we have up here. Okay. We have a cone, a cylinder, a cube, and a sphere. Okay, so you're going to take these shapes and try and figure out where they go up here. Very often when we talk about sphere, it looks just like a circle, but a sphere is something that you can hold. Okay, you can actually hold it. And very often a sphere that we know about is a ball. It could be a basketball, a baseball, a soccer ball. That ball is a sphere, so I can hold that. Okay. A cube, it looks like squares, and it is. It's actually got six squares on it, okay? One here, one here, one on top, 
on the bottom and then on the back sides that we can't see. There's six sides to a cube and they're all made of squares. The cylinder, uh, this one here, uh, has us two circles on uh, top and on the bottom and then on the sides it's just a rectangle it's just lines okay and very often we see that in a can like a can of corn or maybe a soda can okay those are just a couple ideas for cylinders and last one it's called a cone it looks just like a triangle and it is but it's got a circle on the bottom you can actually hold the cone and a cone, first one that comes to my mind, is an ice cream cone, okay? If I take the paper and I flip it upside down, now we can see, yeah, that looks just like an ice cream cone, okay? So I'm gonna let you figure those out. What we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna do a story time. Story called City Shapes by Diane Murray and illustrated by Brian Collier. City Shapes A pigeon takes flight through the bright cityscape, exploring the scenery shape after shape. The city is bursting with shapes of each kind, and if you look closely, who knows what you'll find. A truck rumbling to de deliver the mail, a slivery cart with hot pretzels for sale, and stacks of brown packages hauled up the stairs. Some shapes in the city are on-the-go squares. A skyscraper covered in shimmering glass, a long metal bench near a green patch of grass, and the table with glittery scarves and gold bangles. Some shapes in the city are dazzling rectangles. The seaport with all of its flowing white sails, and there in the market, the pointy fish tails, and colorful flags on a banner that dangles. Some shapes in the city are gleaming triangles. So, so far we've seen a couple shapes. Are those two-dimensional shapes or three-dimensional shapes? That's right, two-dimensional shapes. They're flat. The sunglasses worn by a cop on his beat, the wheels of the taxis that zip down the street, and a manhole that leads to the pipes underground. Some shapes in the city are circles, so round. At sunset, the city is softly aglow with chit-chatting crowds, Hustle, bustle below, when off in the distance a melody hums, it's hard not to follow the sound of the drums. The stage in the park where the instruments sing, some shapes in the city are ovals that swing. And nearby the kites seem to dance in the sky, some shapes in the city are diamonds that fly. The sun fades away into hazy blue dark, and, so, and soon there's a twinkle, a glimmer, a spark. Scattered up high above buildings and cars, some shapes in the city are far away stars. The pigeon flies back through the night cityscape, a city light sparkle, shape after shape. But her heart starts to ache for the shape. She loves best, the shape that is home, her warm circle nest, where the whirling and beeping of cars rushing by helps her fall fast asleep like a sweet lullaby. The end. Thanks so much for reading this story with me today. Have a great day, everyone.